walk with Yah in his covenant requires that we elevate that walk. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10 Minute Torah, day number two of the Torah portion of Vayera. Instead of reading from the book of Bereshit or Genesis among the various various chapters of the Torah portion, I'll take you somewhere a little bit different today. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter number five. And Yeshua says in the famous quote unquote Sermon on the Mount, in verse 20, for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall by no means enter into the reign of the heavens. There is an interesting um, comparison that I found in the Kehot Kumash commentary from the uh, Lubavitcher organization. And it is a an understanding of the two Torah portions, Lech Lecha, and this current Torah portion, Vayera, how that there are similar actions taking place in the life of Abraham, but at a different level. For example, in last week's Lech Lecha, Abraham received a revelation of Yah to come to the land. In chapter 18 of this week's Torah portion, Vayera, he receives another revelation, but this time Yah meets him in the land. Last week in Lech Lecha, Abraham was promised an heir. This week in Vayera, Yah promises Abraham and Sarah an heir, and specifically this time next year. Last Torah portion, Lech Lecha, in that reading, we find that Sarah was abducted by Pharaoh. In this week's Torah portion, she is taken by Avimelech. Last Torah portion, Abraham fathers a son, Ishmael. In this Torah portion, he fathers a son, Yitzhak. Last week, he banished Hagar, and Ishmael, but they return. This Torah portion, he banishes Hagar and Ishmael, and they do not return. Last week, he entered into a treaty with Bera of Saddam. This week, he enters into a treaty with Avimelech. Last week, he is contrasted with Lot, his nephew, and Lot leaves him in chapter 13. This week he is contrasted with Lot, and Lot is left abandoned. In that same regard to Lot last week, Abraham rises up and defends the cities of the plain against various nations that have come against them. This week he is defending the cities of the plain against Yahweh's judgment and asking for mercy. What we're seeing here then is that life goes in cycles. Now, I want to get real philosophical here, but I think it's a keen um, observation that we need to make. And that is that as we move through our lives, various incidences, situations, issues, successes, and failures will present themselves over and over again, each one at a higher level. If you get through a situation victoriously, you use the right words, you take the right actions, you receive the correct counsel, you pray it through, God gives you overcoming, and you celebrate and you rejoice that all went according to God's heart and will. At some point, a similar situation will arise where we will revisit this, maybe different circumstances, a different location, but the similarity will be there and it will be of a higher level challenge so that we rise up on the success of what we have accomplished previously and that we are called to go to a higher victory, a greater victory. It's like graduating first grade and you celebrate and you throw a party, 
But when you graduate the second grade, no one may pay as, as much attention, but it's a greater success. When one finally crosses uh, the stage at high school or at college or some higher level of education, the applause gets louder because the accomplishment is greater. But it started all the way back at that first level, learning to achieve. Each subsequent testing requires greater effort, greater knowledge, greater input, more wisdom, and if we fail, we're held back. Now, let's also compare this, that those areas where we did not succeed, where we failed, the test came, we didn't do so good. That test will come around again. And eventually, it's an open book test. It's always an open book test so that we have the information if we're willing to receive it. And Yah will continually give the test until we pass it. Now, is he just getting a thrill out of putting his people through the ringer? No, he is seeking to grow us, mature us, and enable us to achieve higher things to give him all a greater honor and a greater glory. In the book of Hebrews, chapter number five, the writer is addressing the people that have not really matured as much as they should. And he says in verse 12 and following of chapter 5, For indeed, although by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first elements of the words of Elohim. And you have become such as need milk and not solid food. For everyone partaking of milk is inexperienced in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food is for the mature whose senses have been trained by practice, practice, testing, trials, overcomings to discern both good and evil. We learn. <laughs> sometimes we can learn the easy way. Sometimes we learn the hard way. Oh, how many lessons we have learned the hard way. But as we see evidenced in the life of Abraham and Sarah, over and over again, similar situations will arise. It's a different level. I heard someone say many years ago, higher levels mean bigger devils. It's a cute little phrase, but I'm afraid at times it does mean, some, has some validity. There are those areas of our lives that we think, got that, done that, got the t-shirt, we're on our way, next only to find that maybe the next time we get our legs knocked out from under us, the wind thrown out of our sails, and we don't fare as well as we did the easier test. But the one who gives the test is the one who is faithful to enable us to pass the test. Yah has no desire to see us fail unless it is to reveal a dependence upon something that is not legitimate. The goal is not to allow us to have spiritual crutches that we lean on, favorite verses that we can just throw out and apply any way that we want to. But he wants us to, he wants us to have legitimacy, integrity in our walk, maturity. Think about those three words, legitimacy, integrity, validity, maturity, it's, it's, it's extremely important that we understand how to walk before him skillfully. We cannot raise up subsequent generations. We cannot lay down foundations for someone else to build on with strength and ability if we're afraid of a test. No one wants those. No one asks for those. But the challenges that Yah brings to us is to grow us because he loves us and he's encouraging us to step up, go higher, go further, reach higher. And we can do that today. So as whatever the test may be comes to you, call out to him, go to the open book and find the answers. 
We'll see you again tomorrow. To the Shalom.